Does your Sony DualSense tell you her battery's bone dry when you know you just pumped her full of juice? Does she flash warning messages on the screen when you know you just had her port plugged? Does it seem like she needs a nap because she's low on energy after only three hours? Well, that's not just you boys, that's all of us. And you should stop charging your controller when it tells you you're on low battery. Like, immediately. Let's get it. Alrighty guys, so there is a firmware issue or bug or glitch, or maybe it is programmed or designed by Sony to be so. However, I know it is something they will patch over with a software update, as you can software update not only your console, but also when there is a new update for the DualSense controller, it does uh, prompt you to update those as well. So the issue here is the controllers at around 50 to 60% battery life. So about two and a half to four hours into your gaming session will pop up on screen with a low battery indicator and people are like, okay, and they plug in their controllers and charge them. You're at 50 or 60%. I had thought it was a little bit odd that, you know, about three hours into a gaming session, it's telling me I'm on low battery and to plug in a USB-C cable to charge that bad girl up. Well, I refused and I played through it. The longest I have been able to play with a low battery indicator on screen was six hours. Granted, that was on a PlayStation 4 remastered game. It was on Last of Us 2, so it was not using the haptic feedback motors, just regular vibration. Actually, I think I might have even had it turned off because, well, it didn't have the cool haptic feedback. It's just regular vibration. It was kind of rumbly and annoying. Uh, and it didn't have any features with the adaptive triggers, which again does suck more juice because they're getting stiffer or lighter depending on what's going on on screen. And I had the microphone and I had the onboard microphone muted as well. So it was not constantly listening me, uh, listening to me, which does indeed drain a little bit more battery life. And I do also have the status lights on the DualSense controllers um, on their, their dim setting as well. So that takes even less battery life, but I was able to squeeze out six hours of battery life playing Last of Us 2. And I was thinking, okay, so that, that's odd, right? So I started doing a little bit of research and I dug up a ton of articles and this is a known issue with the PlayStations right now. Now, the main problem with this is, it wouldn't be a problem if it wasn't causing any long-term damage to the battery of the controllers, but it is. Here's the thing. When you get a new electronics device, you were supposed to charge it all the way up to 100% before your initial use, then drain it all the way down to zero or right before it dies, then charge it back up fully. So the cells on board the battery get sort of a memory and they understand, okay, this is maximum capacity for me. Now, granted with new age smartphones and whatnot, whether you're on Android or Apple doesn't really make any difference. Newer flagship phones have have smart batteries on board that basically it is a software program that knows if you charge at 60% or whatever, it trickle charges the battery instead of giving it a full blast of juice. So that way you're not deg uh, degrading the long-term longevity or battery life of your phone. Controllers, these DualSense controllers do not have any kind of safeguard like that. So when you charge them from 60%, over time your battery is thinking, okay, well my 50, 60%, that's when I'm dead pretty much. And then, and then you charge it from there and over time, your battery life really is going to be, you're, you really are gonna be on low battery life after about three hours, which is not the case. You can usually squeak out about six to eight hours of battery life playing a PlayStation 5 game with the haptics on, the microphone, the adaptive triggers, or I've, I've been able to see 12, 16 hours of use on a charge if I'm just playing a PS4 game and I have some of the features turned off, like I had mentioned. I don't know if that, that those results are out of the ordinary, but that, those are the results that I've gotten with my three DualSense controllers. So until Sony introduces an update or patch, a firmware update that is going to fix or remedy this issue to where your low battery indicator or warning pops up at about 15, 10%, which is where it, it should be, uh, or allows you to select, that'd be ideal, is if you could select your preference, do you want to pop on at 30%, 10%, 5%, um, that'd be great. Or if they just fix the issue, but until then, uh, just keep playing when it pops up. I know it's annoying every, you know, 30 to every 30 minutes to an hour, you're going to see a little pop up on the top right of the screen, letting you know, Hey, your controller's on low battery. Just keep playing until it dies. I mean, it's going to pause your game. Once you die, if you are playing a single player game, if you're playing an online multiplayer, obviously you can't pause the internet mom. So you might get killed, but you can quickly switch over to your second DualSense controller or whatever. But don't charge them when it says it's on low battery. It's not. It's at about 50 to 60 percent. Something you stallions and stallionettes need to know about that a lot of PlayStation 5 owners do not know. 
that is going to do it guys if this information was beneficial for you guys helped you out a little bit liking it helps it to get seen by more people so this information will reach and assist them as well which in turn helps me grow this little channel which i do really appreciate subscribe for more content like this i cover a lot of news in the gaming community and industry as well as honest product reviews and a ton of tutorials and i'll see you guys in the next video peace